Hello, and welcome to A Dash of Salt with AJ. I'm your host, Ahsoka Jackson. The semicolon. It's an underappreciated and underutilized piece of punctuation. And if that wasn't bad enough, people are now trying to kick it directly to the curb. Kind of reminds me of the Oxford comma in that regard. There's a move in writing and publishing to move away from its usage. I've even seen people flat out say that they won't read books that contain semicolons. Not improperly used semicolons, just semicolons. I have to say, that attitude both confused and disturbed me. Not just because I use semicolons in my own writing, mind you. It made me think of authors like Nora Roberts and Dean Koontz. Dean Koontz is one of my favorite writers, and when I read his material, it's both a joy and an educational experience for myself as an author. As Nora Roberts, her novel The Witness is a favorite of mine, and it's one I find myself returning to again and again because of how much I enjoy it. Both of these authors are highly successful, and yes, they both use semicolons in their work. Success alone doesn't necessarily equal talent or quality, but in the case of their materials that I've read so far, I can definitely vouch for both. So the idea that their writing would be worthy of being discarded simply because they're aware of the semicolon and how to use it properly, and they choose to do so, I don't get that. I really don't. And I don't know, I feel like it doesn't give their writing the credit that it deserves you know, excluding it on the basis of something like that. And so with things like this in mind, I would like to take some time today to highlight why the semicolon is valuable and should not be allowed to fall by the wayside, let alone find itself actively kicked to the curb. Now before we continue, a quick note about pronunciation. Semicolon and semicolon are both considered acceptable, and I tend to bounce back and forth between the two. Now, a semicolon has two basic uses. The first is to separate the elements in a complex series or list. A complex list basically contains internal punctuation within the different segments of the list. Here's an example sentence. On Friday, I watched John Wick, John Wick Chapter 2, and John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. On Saturday, all five born movies. And on Sunday, A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. In that sense, there are essentially three different segments. There's the one about the John Wick films, the one about the Jason Bourne films, and the one about the Star Wars films. I highly recommend all the aforementioned films, by the way, especially the Bourne Legacy, which I feel is underrated. Both of the lead actors did a phenomenal job, and once you understand that the movie is not going to be about Jason Bourne, and that it's essentially more like the current Treadstone TV series, which basically focuses on other characters, you really get to appreciate the movie for what it is. So definitely check that out if you haven't already, and if you enjoyed the other Bourne movies. In any case, those three sections each contain commas of their own to separate the individual movie titles. So in order to avoid confusion and give things a clearer flow, you would use a semicolon to separate the different sections. And then there's a more nuanced use that the semicolon has. The semicolon replaces what I call the triple C combo, a coordinating conjunction paired with a comma. A triple C is used to join independent clauses into a single compound sentence. Now if you're un unfamiliar with any of this terminology, don't worry, I'll have relevant links in the resource roundup in the show notes. The semicolon basically creates a pause that's stronger than a comma but weaker than a period or full stop. 
It's also milder and less dramatic than the M dash. For me, this image of dancing comes to mind. The semicolon is kind of like that moment where you see a guy very gently, delicately take his partner's hand. If you think of dancing, the semicolon is like a waltz or even West Coast swing, while the M dash has the more punchy, sparking feeling of a jive or lindy hop. The semicolon, by contrast, has a more smooth and fluid vibe to it. Now, regarding the idea of simplifying the language, there are benefits to that, but I feel that eliminating the semicolon is taking things too far, to the point where it feels like it's dumbing down the writing, especially if the reasoning given is that people either don't know how to use semicolons properly, or when they encounter them, don't know what they mean. There are a lot of things that are misused when it comes to writing. For example, commas and apostrophes. And don't even get me started on the different forms of your and their. But is the solution to get rid of all of those? To consolidate all the different forms of your and their into, what, a couple of spellings? Or is the solution to educate people, to teach them the proper way to use these things and also the different meanings? i definitely vote for the latter. The semicolon is a valuable addition to a writer's toolkit, and if you understand how writers are, you know that they agonize over even very small details like word choice and word order, and definitely the rhythm and flow of a sentence or a phrase or a paragraph. The semicolon affords unique opportunities to tweak and fine-tune your writing. Not o- and not only does it provide a way to polish your work as an artist or creator, it's also something that's of use to even regular people who are just trying to communicate in a more straightforward manner. It still has its uses there. Sure, the semicolon is a scalpel rather than a chisel, but we should embrace it for that not try to chuck it out the window for being too fancy. If anything, the semicolon needs more use, not less. Alright guys, what are your feelings on the semicolon? Love it, hate it, don't mind much either way, or barely knew it existed until today. Don't forget, you can find this episode's resource roundup a collection of handy articles on semicolons, coordinating conjunctions, and independent clauses in the show notes at ahsokajackson.com. And if you enjoyed the episode, please feel free to show some love with a like, share, or review on Spotify, Breaker, social media, or whichever platform you use to listen. Tune in next episode for part one of the series on kink shaming, the lies that allies tell, and the unbelievably insulting and unethical content currently being foisted upon the public in the name of diversity and representation. Because it's now trendy to pretend that promoting and romanticizing such acts as choking, injuring, degrading, humiliating, and dehumanizing people of color and women for quote-unquote fun are a favor to the parties involved rather than a misogynist and white supremacist fantasy brought to life and then celebrated by people who would swear up and down how loving, kind, compassionate, and racially in line they are. Boy, I've got some tales to tell. But until then, this is Soka Jackson signing off. Be blessed and stay salty.